Hey guys, this is Jackson Downer, and today I'll be talking about my Japanese traditional sleeve. Many, many people have been wanting to know everything about all my tattoos, but I'm gonna be doing these videos in sections just because there's so much to talk about, which is why today we'll just be talking about the sleeve. So here we go. My sleeve is really the best tattoo of mine to start this video series off with, uh, just because my sleeve was actually the first tattoo I ever got. So originally my sleeve was only from my shoulder down to my wrist, but as you can see since then I've extended upon it, I've got my hand and my fingers done now. Um, which we'll go over in this video as well because I kind of consider it a part of my sleeve. I started working on my sleeve two weeks after I turned 18. I ended up getting my hand and my fingers done when I was um, 19 and 20. I sat working on outlining my entire sleeve for about eight hours. My first tattoo session ever, my first tattoo ever getting the sleeve lined eight and a half hours, I believe it was exactly. So starting at the, uh, the top of my shoulder, the first bit of imagery we've got in my sleeve is uh, Japanese cherry blossoms. In Japanese traditional culture, they symbolize um, the fleeting nature of life. Um, basically, the story behind that is after about two weeks after they blossom, they fall to the ground. So they only last about two weeks. So having the Japanese cherry blossoms in my sleeve, you know, they always remind me that life is short, you know. Do as much as you can, do it as well as you can, and, um, you know, just always keeping that in mind. And these cherry blossoms, they also... Um, extend down into this branch. That's what that is. It's the, the branch that has the, the blossoms on it. And that goes on to the back as well. Some more branching, some more cherry blossoms tucked in there. I've also, of course, got more cherry blossoms up through here. And the next bit of imagery in the sleeve is this beautiful orange and yellow koi fish. And what I really loved about the symbolism of koi fish in Japanese traditional culture is overcoming obstacles. The Japanese traditional legend um, goes something like they koi fish swim up river to become like uh, the river dragon. But in a very simple sense, koi fish um, represent overcoming obstacles. So for me, that always reminds me, you're going to have obstacles in your life. You're going to have adversity that you have to face. But, you know, these koi fish do it. You can do it. And just always remember that you can overcome obstacles and you can become a better person and a bigger person um, at the other end of it. So next in my sleeve, we have my inner bicep piece here, which is a chrysanthemum. Chrysanthemums actually symbolize the country of Japan itself. They also have really, really strong medicinal properties to them as well. So they sort of symbolize good health and persevering through bad health and things like that. Just uh, such a cool piece. And uh, my artist, Mike, he did such a great job um, in terms of the layout on my arm. So next we have uh, my other koi fish. As you can see here, it kind of wraps around my arm a little bit. But this is my second koi fish, a red koi fish. And again, that, that symbolizes overcoming obstacles, which was kind of my main theme and premise behind this whole sleeve. And then of course, on the other side, we have another chrysanthemum, which again, I just explained the meaning of this one. Uh, the meaning is the same for this, but this time, of course, we have a more of a blue, yellow, and green sort of chrysanthemum as opposed to this one, which is more like pinks and plums and yellows and things like that. So now getting down into my hand, we have this peony. And in Japanese traditional culture, the peony flower 
symbolizes um, good fortune, bravery, and honor. I kind of focused more on the whole good fortune aspect of the symbolism of this flower. I think they're really, really beautiful. And next, we have my finger tattoos here and my thumb, of course. Basically, the meaning behind the diamond it symbolizes wealth and good fortune kind of like the peony does any artistic piece on me that symbolizes like good fortune and wealth and things like that it usually correlates to just the fact of me striving to be successful in doing what i love so that's the diamond one down so now moving on to the pine tree the pine tree represents Maine, which is the state where I'm from. I live in Maine in the United States, and Maine is regarded as the pine tree state. Everywhere you go here, pine trees everywhere. And so this was absolutely the, the best icon symbol that I could think of um, to really represent where I'm from. So now moving on to my ring finger. This is the crown, and I basically got the crown to symbolize good health. It is on my ring finger too, of course, so I kind of thought it'd be cool, you know, someday if, um, you know, I got married or something like that, then whoever I get married to could on the same finger get a queen's crown, you know? So good health in a relationship, good health in your life, and all that sort of stuff. So next we have my pinky finger, um, which has the sun on it. Now basically this correlates pretty well with the next knuckle below it, which is uh, the crescent moon, if you can see it. There you go. <laughs> so the sun and the moon basically symbolize um, day and night, which basically to me symbolizes life and the balance of dark and light, the yin and yang. So that's it for my top row of knuckles. Now we've got my thumb too, of course, which is the Eye of Horus or the Eye of Ra. Basically symbolizes protection in the, in the legends or in Egyptian culture. They say that uh, the Eye of Horus, the Eye of Ra, like wards off malevolent forces. I just look at it like, you know, I really loved this symbol. I also love the ancient Egyptians and, you know, they just have such a rich history. So the next row of knuckles that we've got here, on my pointer finger here, we have the Nordic or Viking rune symbol for wealth, which correlates well with the diamond, which also symbolizes wealth for me as well. Now I already kind of explained what any tattoo on me that symbolizes wealth or good fortune, like this one and this one, I already explained like what that means to me. So you already kind of know. On the next knuckle, this is an eighth note music note. Basically that just symbolizes my passion. You know, what I love to do, which is make music for you guys that you guys enjoy and you guys love. And of course, for me, I just love doing music. You know, I love singing, I love playing instruments, I love writing music. I love covering songs too. And so this tattoo really, really does mean a lot to me. I put it on this knuckle below my pine tree because these two, you know, make up a lot of who I am. This is where I'm from and this is me. You know, this is 100% me, both of these things. Now on the next knuckle, which is below my king's crown for good health, um, is the Nordic or Viking rune symbol for good health. So you can, tell why. Basically it has the same meaning as the king's crown right above it, um, which is why I put it on the same finger. And so you already kind of know the meaning behind that. And then of course we have the moon, which I already explained. It goes, it plays right in with the sun there. On my third set of mini knuckles right here, you can see I have dots on all of the tips of my fingers. These are basically just uh, stylistic accents. You know, there's not much that fits on these little mini spots. So I uh, was able to put these dots in a certain pattern on my fingers here. My thumb's the only one with like a triangle dot, but they're all just made up of three dots, different directions. And then uh, my thumb's got the triangle. 
Now in total, I would say that this entire sleeve um, was about 30 hours. Obviously I broke it up into sessions. Like I said, my first session was about eight hours long. Um, but after that it was mostly in like three to four, sometimes two hour um, sessions throughout the years. Now as far as pain goes, on the pain scale of things, um, probably the worst parts of my tattoo pain-wise um, was, you know, up here going into the chest. The chest is just a really sensitive spot. Um, and you know, everybody's different, of course. It might be different for you in some cases, but usually the chest is a very sensitive spot. So as you get up on it like this and up in here and things, it becomes a very sensitive spot. Also, naturally, um, the inner bicep is killer. It's very, very sensitive, tender skin. Um, you know, it's not really made to be exposed very much. So it's not as like tough, um, tough skin as the, you know, the outer arm. Other than that, I mean, of course, the wrist was pretty rough. My hand wasn't too, too bad. Lower knuckles and tips of my fingers definitely killed, but they were pretty quick. As you can see, you know, it doesn't take very, very long to do things like this. On the elbow where I just have some waves here, that's also a pretty interesting spot. It's not so much like extremely painful, like the inner bicep. It's just more of all the way up your ulna, you feel these radiating vibrations from the tattoo needle slamming on your uh, your elbow. And you know, my bottom fingers went numb a little bit, you know, and your elbow swells up so big too. So that was an interesting spot. Pretty painful, but not, you know, not nearly as bad as the other really painful spots I just outlined. So yeah, that's the pain, you know, the whole pain scale for you in the sleeve anyway. As far as the healing process for the sleeve goes, line work heals pretty easily. Uh, once you start getting into these big chunks of color and stuff like that, it gets trickier. Um, I always definitely remember that my hand was really, really tough to heal uh, just because it's such a mobile part of your body um, as well as your, as my elbow. I always had to make sure when my elbow was healing that I wasn't overextending so that, you know, scabs would break open. You don't want that. Um, so the healing process was very fun for the elbow, um, the wrist, very mobile part as well, hand. Um, but other than that, not too bad. Inner bicep gets very itchy. Uh, when you're healing it, it's also, you know, you got to make sure you're not rubbing it too hard against your body and things like that. But as far as tattoos go in general, um, arm tattoos aren't too, too bad as far as the healing process and even the pain scale goes. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you found out everything you wanted to know about my Japanese traditional sleeve tattoo. I know I've been getting so many requests to do this video. You can definitely let me know in the comment section down below uh, what tattoos you have, any cool tattoo stories that you might have, and you know, your symbolic meanings behind yours, if you want. I'm always interested in uh, you know what you guys have to say, so. Of course, like the video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to me here on YouTube if you haven't already. Stay tuned for the next video in this tattoo mini series where I go over another tattoo in another section of my body. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.